and welcome back to this Make Music video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start making music with your Launchpad Mini, our most portable grid controller. Please ensure that you have your Launchpad Mini connected to your computer via USB and configured with Live, as we demonstrated in the previous video. To get you up and running, we've created packs for you to get started with, which you can download from the links below this video. I'm going to download this one by clicking just here. Once this download is complete, on a Mac, navigate to your Downloads folder and double click on the zipped file to unzip it. On a Windows machine, navigate to your Downloads folder, right click on the zipped folder and select Extract All and tick the Show Extracted Files When Complete box. Then extract the files. Now I'd recommend creating a folder called Launchpad Projects inside your documents. This way you can store the files here and you don't have to worry about losing the Launchpad projects if you clear out your downloads. On a Mac, navigate to Documents and select New Folder. On a Windows machine, navigate to Documents and also create a new folder. Then return to your downloads and we're going to copy and paste the extracted files into the new Launchpad Projects folder, just like so. Next up, open Live. Once that's loaded, click on Add Folder in the browser on the left-hand side of Live and navigate to wherever you just saved the pack and press Open. This is what this will look like on a Mac and this is what this will look like on a PC. you'll now see the folder available to open in the browser on the left-hand side of Live. Click on this and navigate to the .als file and double-click to open the project. This project has now opened up in the session view and you'll see that we have lots of different colored clips on this page. Each of these clips contains either drums, bass, melodies or some other element of a song. These clips are organized by type into tracks. So for example, on this track, we have drums. On this track, we have bass and so on. On your Launchpad Mini, you're able to take hands-on control of this session view in Live by selecting Session, which is the fifth button along on the top from the right. So we're now looking at the session view both on screen in Live and on the Launchpad Mini. If we want to play one of these clips, we can launch them by either clicking on the triangle play button on the clip itself, or you can press the corresponding pad on the Launchpad Mini to launch the clip. The clip that's playing will now turn yellow. In order to stop a clip from playing, you can launch an empty clip slot on the same track, and the clip that's playing will stop at the end of the next bar. If there are no empty clip slots on that track, then you can select Mixer, which is the button on the far right of the top row of buttons on the Launchpad Mini, and then press the stop button for that track like so. We'll take a closer look at this mixer section later on in the video. You're able to have one clip per track playing at the same time. So if you launch a different clip on the same track, the current clip will stop at the end of the next bar and the new clip will start playing. This keeps everything in time when you're launching clips. In the session view, the rows coming across the screen are called scenes, and these allow you to collect a set of clips that you want to play together and launch them with one button press. Scenes can be used to organize the different sections of your track. So for example, in the top scene, you could have all of the clips that are gonna play in the intro of your song. 
In the second scene, you could have all of the clips that are going to play in the verse of your song, and so on. I can launch all of these clips in one go by pressing the Scene Launch button here in Live, or by pressing the Scene Launch button here on the Launchpad Mini. As we mentioned earlier, in order to stop a clip from playing, we can launch an empty clip slot on that track. By that same logic, if you have an empty scene like this, you can launch this empty scene to stop everything from playing like so. If you don't have an entire empty scene, then you can select Mixer and press the Stop All button just here. The Launchpad Mini allows you to take hands-on control of Live's Mixer. By selecting the Mixer mode, which is the far right pad on the top row of the Launchpad Mini, you're able to take control of the volume, the pan, the sends, the stop buttons, as we've already spoken about, mutes, solos, and record arms. Being able to take control of such a comprehensive set of parameters opens up a host of creative possibilities when using your Launchpad Mini with Live. Using the Launchpad Mini, you're able to take control of drum racks inside Live. Drum racks allow you to load in samples, such as drum hits, and play them in any pattern that you like. Live comes with a range of great sounding drums, which you can find under the Drums folder in the browser section on the left hand side of Live. In this project, we already have an 808 drum kit loaded on track 8, which we'll now make a beat with. Here, you can see 16 drum sounds in a 4x4 grid that we can use to make drum patterns. Now, select the Record Enable button on that track and enter User 1 mode on your Launchpad Mini by pressing the 6th pad from the right on the top row of the Launchpad Mini. The 4x4 grid that you see on the drum rack now corresponds to the 4x4 grid on the bottom left section of the Launchpad Mini, so you can play the drum rack just here. If you want LED feedback on these pads while you're playing them, you'll need to follow this short set of steps. Firstly, delete one of the effects tracks so that we can create a new MIDI track. And we need to do this because Live Lite has an eight track limit. And then create a new MIDI track by going to Create and Insert MIDI Track. On this new track, set the MIDI in to be the drum rack. Set the monitor to in and set the MIDI out to be the Launchpad Mini. Now the routing we've set up here essentially takes the incoming MIDI notes from the drum rack and sends them back out to the Launchpad to light up the pads. You'll now see the pads light up when you play them. If you want to record a drum pattern, you can double click in an empty clip slot on the drums track to make an empty MIDI clip. This clip will hold our drum pattern. Next up, go to the Edit menu, come down to Record Quantization, and select 16th Note Quantization. This will keep your recordings in time as you play them. To further assist you playing in time, turn the metronome on by clicking just here. And then select this drop down menu, and you can turn on either a 1 or 2 bar count in. I'm going to select 1 bar. By selecting a count in, you're opting to hear the click track for a bar or two before the recording actually starts so that you can start in time. So let's mute the drums that are already in the project because we're going to record some new ones. And now we're going to press the session record button up in the control bar. You'll then hear the count in that you selected. And then this clip will be set to record on a loop. This allows you to overdub with each pass so you can record one drum at a time like so. If you make a mistake, simply press Command or Control Z to remove that recording.
You can press spacebar to stop recording, and then you can explore some different ideas that you might want to record into the clip without them being recorded in. Then when you're ready to record these new ideas, you can press the session record button again. So you're now able to launch and stop clips in live. You can launch scenes, control the mixer, you can play drum racks and record your beats all using the Launchpad Mini. In the next video, we're going to point you towards some additional resources to continue learning music production using your Launchpad Mini.